What's up, Awakening? So sorry this morning. We had a, some technical difficulties. You've got to love technology, right? Um, but we're going we're gonna to step into a time of prayer, a time of prayer. Um, and really, I just encourage you, wherever you're at, to engage with us. I know you're, you're watching or listening and uh, through a computer screen or, or your phone or whatever it might be. But I encourage you to jump right in. This is a prayer meeting. This is a prayer room. Um, this is a time for you to engage in prayer together. It's a corporate setting, and so I encourage you to sing along with us. Um, and later on, we're going to be praying for the lost today. And so I encourage you, um, even just begin to ponder and think about your friends that maybe not do not know Jesus, maybe the Starbucks that you go to every day, and the, it's the same person, same barista, and you just need to think about her or think about him. Um, or maybe it's, it's, it's just a family member, uh, uh, not just a friend, not just a stranger, but maybe it's a family member that doesn't know Jesus. Um, just really begin to think about them upon them and pray for them as we pray for the lost today. So I'm going to pray, and uh, our man Colin is going to lead us in some worship, all right? Lord, I thank you so much for who you are. Father, I know that your presence is real. I know that your presence can, can shift atmosphere, you shift atmospheres, your presence can change things. Lord, we've seen over the lost today, we've seen over those that do not know Jesus, those who have yet to hear or, or make a decision to follow Jesus, to make him their Lord and Savior, to, to, to accept the free gift of salvation. Lord, we pray for those today, we lift them up today, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
spend some time right now and just begin to pray for the lost, uh, pray for those that don't know Jesus. I'm going to read some scripture here um, because I think it's important that we pray scripture, that we pray God's words back to him. And so I'm going to actually read from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to start reading from verse 17. It says this, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is this disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. And I want to also read um, chapter 2, reading from verse 1. It says this, And I, brothers, when I came to you, did I come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God? For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I, I love this section of 1 Corinthians because I think it's, I think we get caught up even as messengers of the gospel, you know, preaching to our, our, our friends who aren't saved, living a life that would, that would compel them to, to come to Christ, um, that we actually think we have to have all the right pieces in place, but in all reality, you can look like a fool as long as the Spirit of God is on you, that, that the gospel can be preached um, because it is the foolishness to the world, but it's the wisdom of God for those who are being saved in Christ Jesus. And so I want to pray for those who see the gospel as foolish, 
who see who are perishing and, and they see the gospel, the way that Jesus came and, and saved us. They see that as foolish. I want to pray for those people. And some of you, you know the exact people, you know their names. I want you to, to pray their names today. Um, I, I love in Romans 10:1, uh, Paul prays for the nation of Israel, says, My prayer for Israel is that it shall be saved, that it shall receive salvation, that it shall come to salvation. And so you can pray a simple prayer like that. Maybe you have no idea the words to pray. You can just put in that instead of Israel, you put in the name of that person. You can say, Nathan shall receive salvation in Jesus' name. That's a simple prayer right there. But I'm going to pray, and then we're going to continue to go into this time of intercession. Father, I thank you so much that Christ has been revealed to us through this power of the Spirit of God. I pray, I, I pray that, that, that it would not be in wisdom of words, but it would be in, in foolishness. That it would, be, it would be foolish to the world. That it would maintain that integrity of being foolish to the world. Because it doesn't make sense that you would find something in us worth saving. That you would find something in us worth loving, Lord. We're so thankful for that. Lord, I specifically pray for those who see it as foolish, who, who are perishing right now, who are not being saved. Lord, we ask that you would apprehend them. We ask that you would come into their life. Lord, I ask that there would be a proclamation of the gospel and a demonstration of its power today in their lives. Lord, I pray for, for even just the strangers that we pass by who don't know Jesus. Would you compel us to love them? Would you move us to love them? Would you move us to share the gospel with them? Lord, I pray that the Spirit of God would fill us with boldness to preach the gospel. Lord, I pray for those who, for whatever reason, whether it was church hurt, whether it, whether it was a, a family um, um, conflict, whatever it caused them to walk away from you, whatever caused them to disassociate themselves from you, Lord, I pray that your love would associate with the disassociated and that it would compel them and move them back to you, that they would come back to Jesus in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for even our city, Fresno. Lord, I pray that the lost in our city will be saved in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for college and young adults. Lord, I pray for pray for them. I pray for Fresno State, the people who have yet to hear the gospel. I pray for, for those that are living for themselves in, in an age where people are living for themselves, Lord, I pray that you would humble them and you bring them to their knees, that they could receive salvation, that the message of repent and be baptized, every one of you, and receive the Spirit of God would still be the same message that they would hear today, Lord, that they would experience the radical love of the cross in Jesus' name, that it was foolishness to the world, but it is salvation for those that believe, Lord, I pray that there would be believing hearts that would, that would be transformed this week by the power of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, come to 
to approach your throne. We don't take it lightly, God. We don't take it lightly. We understand that it costs your son. We're so thankful. So when we come to the altar, Jesus, you're beautiful. Oh, what a savior. You're awesome. Your desire is that none should perish. So, Lord, we just happen to have that desire right now. Give us that desire. 
that none should perish, but that all could receive everlasting life. Give us that desire, Father. Stir it up in us. Holy Spirit, stir it up in us. Spirit of God, stir it up in us. Jesus, thank you for coming for us. Thank you for your work on the cross. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, hey guys, we love you. Um, such a great morning. It's such a great way to start off our week to be able to pray together. Um, I encourage you to come out Thursday night this week. We have Carry the Love with us at 7 p.m. It's going to be an amazing night in the courtyard, so do not miss it. Invite everyone that you know, and I challenge you, share the gospel this week. Tell someone about Jesus this week. It's the greatest news ever. Um, share someone that good news in Jesus' name. All right? Have a great day. Thank you, girl.